In this tutorial, we're going to create a legal slash lawyer booking calendar using the Bookkinetic plugin and WordPress. And everything I'm going to show you right now in the next few seconds, you can define in the plugin, and we're going to in this tutorial, we're going to build this entire booking system, and you can define every part of it, including rearranging any of these options to whatever order you would like to have. So first, there's a location. Choose a location. This is defined as we set up the plugin. The staff person was defined. You can define as many as you want, as many staff, as many locations as you want. This is one service we created. You can define as many as you want. You can add as many extra services as you want or upsells. I'm going to add that one to my cart right now. Person fills out their name, the name of their business. These are custom fields that we added. You can add whatever questions you want. There's a drag and drop editor to help you create these questions. Super simple. And you can collect whatever data you need. Let me click on next step and we can choose the dates. Right now, we only have up until 30 days from now. I'll tell you why in this tutorial. We choose the day, we choose the time, and this is our checkout now. We can accept payment right through this plugin. There's even some fancy discount codes. Apply that discount, click on OK, and we have a 1% discount because lawyers don't discount very much, if ever. We can choose to pay by credit card or locally, which in this case means cash on delivery. Click on Confirm Booking. And something you didn't see here which you're going to see in the back end is we are connected to Zoom. So your visitors and customers can create these appointments. It automatically creates the Zoom meetings. It sends them the passwords and the links to access them on a specific date and to you as well. And so you have pretty much the whole thing automated. And I'm going to show you how to set all that up in this tutorial. My name is Bjorn Allpass in WP Learning Lab. We will help you get better at WordPress so you can earn more for yourself, for your customers, and for your business. If you haven't done so yet, make sure to click subscribe and ring the bell. Now let's get back to this tutorial and start building a full-fledged booking calendar. After you've installed the Bookkinetic plugin, you have a Bookkinetic option on the side menu over here. Click on that and it takes you to a dedicated Bookkinetic dashboard. To get back to WordPress, there's a button right up here. It takes you back at any time. And in this dashboard is where we configure everything to do with our appointment scheduling. So we're going to go through this step by step. I'm going to show you the settings first. Then we're going to set up the form in a specific order. because There's a specific order you have to do things in order for it to work. So first, let's go to settings. Inside the settings, under general, we're able to define our general settings for our appointments. We can customize them for each appointment later. But if we have a general idea of what most appointments will be like, we can set that here. The time slot length is how long an appointment would normally take. You can choose from one minute all the way up to five hours. I'm going to choose one hour. The minimum time required prior to booking. This should be prep time you need before the appointment or whatever else. I'm going to choose 15 minutes. So when someone books an appointment, the scheduler will say 15 minutes before that appointment is also going to be booked. That's going to be prep time. The week starts on a Sunday. Default appointment status, you can have approved or pending. Pending will allow you to manually approve appointments later if you want. I'm just going to choose... I'll choose pending. That's how most appointments probably are. Set the slot length of the service duration. This will make more sense once we add some services. I'm going to enable this. Limited booking days. This is how many days in advance you can book. So if I publish the calendar today, somebody can book an appointment one year from now. I'm going to change this to 30 days. So I'm only going to let people book 30 days into the future just so that if I want to go on vacation at some point or if something comes up a year from now, it's a long time. We have a bunch of small kids running around. A lot can happen in a year. I can't plan that far ahead. So I'm going to set this to 30 days. The date format I'll keep as this. The time format I'll keep like this as well. But there's a bunch of options you can choose from. Actually, I'm going to choose with the AM so I know if it's evening or morning. And then we're going to save changes. Now I'm going to go to booking panel. The booking panel allows you to rearrange the steps in the booking form. This is one of the most requested features. It was just added this past week. And it basically changes the flow the visitor goes through when they fill out their form. This will make more sense after we've completed our form and we tested it out. Then we'll come back in here and I'll show you how to rearrange these. It's just drag and drop. Super simple. Under payments, you can choose your currency. There's a number of currencies to choose from. Most currencies, it looks like. You can change your currency format. I'm going to keep it as is. The number format, I'm going to add a comma. That's how you do it in North America. The number of decimals, I'm going to keep it as two. And I'm going to keep the selected customer can pay full amount. And don't get thrown off by the 45,000. That's not an actual price on your form. This is just the format that we're choosing for how the numbers will display if they go into the thousands. Save changes. Under payment methods, we can enable Stripe, PayPal, local payment, or WooCommerce. 
I'm going to enable Stripe. And the two things you need are the publishable key and the secret key. If you have a Stripe account, that's great. If you don't, it's free. It's super easy to set up. I have one already. You just go to stripe.com. You can set it up within minutes. And the API keys are found inside your Stripe account. You just go to developers and then API keys. And the publishable key is here. And the secret key is here. Click on reveal live key token. And then just copy both of these one at a time, of course, and then paste them in here. And then copy this one. And then paste it in here. And this is the logo for the checkout pop-up. If we copy this, let's view it in a new tab. And here's it appears. It's put out of context, but it is appropriate. It looks like a store checkout. So if we don't like how it appears in the eventual pop-up when we see it, we can always come back here and change it to a different logo, which doesn't have to be in the Stripe domain. It could be a logo pulled from your own website if you want it. And I'm going to keep local payment on, which is basically like cash on delivery. It's payment in person. Whatever formats you accept in person, you use that as local payment. I'm going to click on Save Changes. I'm going to go to Company Details. And for the company details, we'll just add a photo. It's going to be a generic legal photo. Let's just choose this one right here. Click on Open. The company name will be Legal Eagles. The address will be Downtown Legal Town. The phone number, just gibberish number, and the website address is going to be the address of this site. And there we have our company details filled out. Once we finish that, click on Save Changes, and then go to Business Hours. This is where we define our overall business hours. These can be more specifically defined for different users and different, different appointment types. We'll get to that later. But this is basically be how many hours or what hours in the day the gym is open. And right now we have 9 to 6 on Monday all the way through Sunday, 9 to 6. That's good enough for me. You can add a break. Say you wanted a lunch hour at, at 1 p.m. on a Friday. Maybe you wanted to have some lunch with your coworkers. From, let's make it from noon until 1. And that'll make it so appointments can't be booked in that time because that's a lunch hour. You can also choose a day off. For example, if your location isn't open on Sundays, check that box and then Sundays will be closed. When your hours are all set up, click on Save Changes. Under Holidays, we can choose which days are holidays. Then you just click on the dates that are holidays and then we'll put a circle around it and that'll be a day off in the scheduler. Click on Save Changes. And for email settings, we are able to send through WordPress mail or an SMTP, which is an outside mail server. I usually go with the WordPress mail. If that doesn't work, then I move to an SMTP. There's lots of tutorials to help you set up an SMTP. For the sender email, I'll put bjorn at thegymcompany.com. You would put your real email address in there. Sender name, bjorn, save changes. So now when emails are sent, this is who it's going to be coming from. Google Calendar settings. Let's enable Google Calendar. If we disable it, we won't be able to sync with Google Calendar. If we enable it, we're able to sync, which means if you have a personal calendar or business calendar or something, and say you have a meeting at 10 a.m. on Monday, if you don't sync it, that 10 a.m. on Monday slot is going to be available for booking through this booking app. But if you enable the sync, then if you book a meeting or anything else on Google Calendar, it will show as busy on this calendar, meaning that time slot will not be available. So in most cases, you're going to want to sync. In order to sync, we need some API information. We need the client ID and the secret ID. To get those, I've linked to my previous BookNank tutorial in the description down below to the exact timestamp where I walk you through step by step how to create your Google Calendar app and get the credentials that you put into the BookNetic plugin. So check that out when you're integrating Google Calendar with BookNetic. SMS settings. I don't have a Twilio account, but if you do have a Twilio account, you can find the account SID and the auth token and the sender phone number. You can send text messages to people for reminders and things like that, which is pretty cool. Since the last video, we have another option that is to integrate with Zoom, which is in high demand right now. To do that, click on integration settings for Zoom down here, then click on enable. And then we have to enter an API key and a secret key, which we'll find in our Zoom account after we create an app with Zoom. It's really simple. I'll walk you through it. Then we add a meeting topic, a meeting description. And we can choose to have random passwords required to join the meeting by toggling this on or off. So let's first get our API key and our secret key. In our Zoom accounts, I have a basic account, which means it's free. If I go to plans and pricing, you see right here it's basic. 
go to plans and pricing. It is the free account, but for whatever reason, we still have access to the API, which is listed under the pro account. If I click on there, it takes us to our APIs or Zoom's APIs, and here we can create an app. You might have to log in on the top left. There should be a login button. I'll just sign out of my account. It says sign in. If I click on there, I sign in with my existing credentials for my Zoom account, and now I'm signed in. If I go to develop and build app, this is where we can build an app. We wanna choose JWT. I already created one with the belief I could delete it later, so I could record this video and show you a fresh one, but it turns out after you create one, you can't delete it. So I'll walk you through what I did to build the one I have. You have a create button here. I have a view here button instead. So I'll click view here, you click on create, you enter information about the app. This was my test one, the gym booking app. You would enter a name. This is for your own benefit, these names. It's not necessarily seen on the front end by any of your users. So you got a name and description, your company name, developer. I, don't, I didn't add any links. I just kept those all blank. Clicked on continue. And here we have our API keys almost immediately. So I'm going to choose copy the semi API key, go back into Zoom and paste it right there. And then I'll go for my secret key. I'm going to click on copy. If you want to see the secret key, click on this little closed eyeball to see the key. Go back into Zoom, paste it in for the secret key. Now our keys are in. That's how fast that was. But we're not done. We have to go to continue. Here we can choose to have event subscriptions on or off. I kept mine off. If you're booking meetings through Booknetic, you don't need that on. If you're doing something else, you do. But through Booknetic, the one I'm going to show you, you don't need to have this on. Click on continue. Your app will show, if I deactivate this, it should show activate app right here. Click on that and your app is activated and it's ready to go. Now these API credentials will actually work. For the meeting topic, I'm just gonna have incorporating my business, meeting description, same thing. And we can add keywords to the description and the topic, which are supplied by the people who book the appointment. If I click on list keywords, it shows all the keywords we can use. Appointment info, including date, start time, service, extras they bought. This will all make more sense in a little bit. Service information, customer info, staff info, location info, company info. All of these, you can copy and paste these into your meeting topic and description to make them more customized and more readable. This is something you might want to test because in Zoom, our meeting topic, this is what actually shows up as the appointment name. So you might want to have incorporate my business with and then have the person's name added via a keyword. Possibly, it's up to you how you wanna do that. I'm gonna keep set random passwords on, then I'll click on save changes. Another new option since the last video, import export data. So if you wanted to move the booking calendar you set up on this site to a different one, maybe you did it locally on your hard drive first, or maybe you're a developer doing this for customers, you can set up your perfect form, you can go to export data, it will export as a CSV file to your hard drive, then you can click on browse, choose that CSV file on a different site, and then import it, and your form will be all set up. Everything that you set up in the demo site or the staging or the previous customer, previous client, or locally will then be set up on that site you import to, making your life a whole lot easier and your work a whole lot faster. Now that we're done with the settings, we're gonna start creating the form, and this has to be done in a very specific order, which will make sense later on in the video, but first, just follow along in the correct order. First, we'll go to locations on the left-hand side over here, click on that, and I'm gonna create a new location by clicking on add location. I'm gonna give the location a name, I'm gonna call this downtown legal town. It's a pretty awesome name. For the image, let's just click on browse, and I have a few images that I found on a stock photo site. This is gonna be the image for the location itself, so I wanna make it legal, but somewhat generic in my case. So I chose that legal image and the address is gonna be number 15, Legal Town. Phone number is going to be not a real phone number, because it's not a real place. The description is gonna be um, the best legal eagles in town. I should make slogans for a living. Click on Add Location. So here is our legal image. Pretty good, got a little gavel there and some books and the, the scales of justice, fantastic. Now we have a location. After the location, we can add our staff. Click on staff, click on add staff. And the reason we have to do the location first 
is because the locations field inside the staff creator is mandatory. So if we don't add that there, it's not going to work here. So that's why we do that first. For a user, I'm going to add our WordPress user. If you want to add a staff member that isn't you, just add them as a WordPress user, then you can add them here as a staff member. I'm going to keep my full name or add my full name, not keep it, but add it. Email address, add an image for myself. Here's the lawyer image. That doesn't look at all like me. Maybe I should change the name. I can't right now. Anyway, we'll keep it how it is. But just imagine that's a picture of me, the lawyer. I'm not a lawyer, but just imagine that was a picture of me. For the location, we choose downtown Legal Town. This will display a list of all the locations you've created if you created more than one. Then we can add notes if we want down below. Our weekly schedule, we can define that here. We can use the, the timesheet that we have for the general timesheet or we can create our own. Let's click in this tab. We can change our work times if we want. We can add days off. And this is a schedule that's going to stick with us for a long time until we come back here and change it again. So the stuff you want to add in here is your regular schedule. We can add exceptions in just a minute. We want to add breaks, of course. Probably have lunch time. Let's choose from noon until 1. It's pretty standard lunch time. And we want to add that for every day. I'm just going to add it for Tuesday, but you'd add that for every day. And Sundays, legal offices are closed. Saturdays are usually closed as well. So I'll turn both of those to off. I'm going to go up to special days. This is where you can add special days. So weekly schedule is your regular schedule. But let's say, let's add a special day on April 30th, because it's my birthday. And I'm going to make it so my birthday, I'm a workaholic. So on my birthday, I'm still going to work for a couple hours. But I'm only going to work from 9, or sorry, that's 10, until 2, shorter hours. You can add that special day. You can also remove special days by hitting the garbage can here. Holidays are full days off. So the holidays that are pulled in from the general settings will be in here. If you have other holidays, say you have a vacation coming up or something, who knows what, you can pick which days, just click on them here, and those days will be labeled as holidays and those won't be bookable. When we're all done with the staff member, we click on Add Staff. While you're on the staff page, you can also make edits to the staff by clicking on the three dots, then clicking on Edit. For example, down below here, we have the Zoom user, which we didn't add. We can add that now. We click on this drop down, and if our API is connected properly, we can add our Zoom user right here. Mine says no results found because I did some research, and it turns out the free account does not offer the API, even though I have API keys on this page. If I go to plans and pricing for Zoom, it shows the API starts on the $20 a month account. So if you have the correct account level with Zoom, and you have your API added, API key and secret key added to here to book an edit like I showed you a moment ago, then you could select your user. And then when an appointment is booked with this user, a Zoom meeting will be automatically booked in Zoom, which makes life a whole lot easier. So make sure you have a paid Zoom account to make that work. Once we have staff, we can add services. Let's go to services over here and click on the plus beside categories. And let's call this um, general And that's our category. I'm going to add a plus to add a service. I want to create a service under there. I'm going to call this incorporating your business. Under category general, the price for this meeting, I don't know how much this costs. I know you can do it for free online in Canada, so I don't know why you pay $1,000 to go see a lawyer to do it, but maybe you would. So let's make it $1,000. The deposit is how much people pay up front. It's, it's a deposit. And you can have it at 100%, which means they pay the entire amount, or you can have a different percentage. Or you can also have a dollar amount that they pay as a deposit if you don't want to have a percentage. Or if your prices are variable and it makes sense to have a flat fee for the deposit. So you can choose the dollar amount. You can hide the pricing from the booking panel. I don't want to do that because I want them to know the price. Uh, the duration is how long the meeting is going to be. In my case, it's going to be an hour. You can also have it all the way up to a week-long meeting if you want. I'm going to keep it as an hour. Actually, it doesn't have to be a meeting. It could be whatever the service is. It could be tree pruning, in which case the duration might be a week. So it depends what your business is and how you define a specific service. So it gives you a lot of flexibility in how long the duration can be. You can hide the duration from the booking panel, or you can show it. I'm going to choose to show mine. The slot time length, I'm going to set this to the slot length as service duration. So the time length that they can book in the calendar is one hour, which is the same as our service duration. The buffer time before and after. This allows you to add 
an amount of time before the meeting. So for example, if you were to book uh, right now, if you're to book an appointment for today, I would want to have at least three hours before you come in because maybe I want to get some paperwork ready. Or you could have a week. You could have many hours. You could have days. You can have up to a week of buffer time before the meeting to allow you to prepare for the meeting. You can also have buffer time after. Maybe there's work to do after the meeting. You can choose an amount of time to happen before and after the meeting. So you choose a buffer time as you need. We're going to choose one hour before, one hour after. And then under staff, we're going to choose our staff members. This is why I made the staff members first, or not first, but before the services, because you can't have a service without assigning staff to it. So you're going to choose Bjorn, and you have a specific price. Maybe I charge more than 1000 Maybe Maybe my fees run 1200 bucks an hour for incorporating, not just 1000 because I'm kind of a legend when it comes to incorporating companies. So you can change the price right here. Or maybe I'm an intern, so mine's only 600 for the cost. So you can change the price here if you want. I'm not going to change mine. The timesheet is for this specific service. So we have our timesheet for the overall company that we did in the settings. We have the timesheet for the staff member that we did a minute ago. We have the timesheet for this service. Maybe we only want to incorporate companies on Tuesdays. So we come in here, we turn this on, and we turn off every day except for Tuesday. And now we're incorporating only on Tuesdays between 9 and 6. Under special days, maybe we want to have a incorporating extravaganza day. So we come in here, maybe the April 30th from 9 until 6, which is not our usual day. Normally we only do Tuesdays. This is a Thursday. So that is a special, super special incorporation mega extravaganza day. You can set that in here as special days. Extras allows you to have upsells. So if you wanted to upsell them to, maybe they get incorporated, maybe you want to upsell them to a leasing agreement. This is clearly something a lawyer wouldn't do, but it's uh, something you can do if you have a business where this makes sense. I want to upsell you to a leasing agreement. It's going to cost three grand. This is going to take mm, one hour as well. I'll let you do one of those and save extra. So now we can upsell them as they're filling out the form to get a lease agreement because they're incorporating their business. Maybe they got to find a place to lease. This is that option right there. Save service. Now we have our service right here. We can add more services by clicking the plus icon. We can add more categories by clicking the plus icon. Maybe this one is, uh, let's see, divorce is a common lawyer thing. I bet DUI should deserve its own category. And you can have its own ca your own category for all these options and then services below them, and people can pick which service makes sense for them. At this point, our calendar is done. We can go and check it out. So let's head out to the WordPress dashboard before we do anything else and add this to a page. Let's go to Pages, Add New. I control click or command click to open a new tab. Let's call this Legal Eagle Booking. We're gonna add a block. Click on the plus and choose the book netic block that comes with the plugin. A little bit of short code right there. We can now on the right hand side define what appears for that short code. For appearance, we'll choose the default. I'll show you how to change this later on, change the actual appearance. Here you can just change it by using a different style. But where do we change that inside the book netic plugin? I'll show you that. Service filter, this is going to be for incorporating your business. Category filter, it's under general. Staff filter, Bjorn. So you can filter this based on specific things if you want or you could have it just the entire form by not choosing anything. The filters would allow you to have a dedicated page for something. So if you wanted a page for every staff member, you could have this filtered by a staff member. So this could be uh, Bjorn's Legal Eagle Booking, and then click on the short code here, and then we filter by staff, and then it will show only things related to Bjorn. His location, his services, his upsells, his schedules, all that would be just related to him on this page. But like I said, I'm not gonna do that for this example. Leave it at that. Let's publish this. Publish this again, view the page. And here is our booking form. We see our sidebar here. That's not perfect. So since I am using Astra, I can come back into here, scroll down to the bottom, uh, turn off our sidebar, make our content full width contained, update that, 
refresh. Now we have a beautiful legal booking calendar. First, we choose location. Let's click on there. There's Bjorn. It's not really me. Picture's a little squished. Ideally, you'd have a square image. I had a bit of a rectangular image here. Let's click on there. And no services found. So I didn't assign the service properly to myself. So let's go back into Booknetic. Let's go to services. Let's go to incorporating. It says no staff selected. Under staff, add staff. The reason it didn't work is I chose specific price and I made $0. I didn't uncheck this box when I was creating this staff member. So let's save service. Let's come back out here. Now it should work. It also has a little thumbnail added to the service down here. So now if we go through here again, click on Legal Town, me, incorporating your business as a service. This would obviously list more services. If there are more, you'd pick which one was relevant. Use the customer. I want to add a leasing agreement because why not? And enter my name, first name, last name, email, phone number. There we go. You want to add a real phone number for in your case or the visitor's case. Now we can choose our days. You'll notice we can only book 30 days ahead. We cannot book beyond that because that's what we set in the general settings. If we had that set to say 90 days, we could book all the way into May, June, July or if you had set for a year or set to a million days, then you could book forever, but you probably wouldn't want to do that. So 30 days is the right number for me. If you click on any one of these, we now see our booking options for days and times. So let's choose two to 4 p.m. So here we have our date time. Here we have our location, staff member, and we can check out right here in the form. We can accept payments with our Stripe payment gateway or our local gateway, which I also chose. And I'm not actually gonna use a credit card and pay four grand to myself for a service I'm not gonna to provide to myself. So I'm gonna choose local, which would be the equivalent of a cash on delivery. So when you're there, you pay for the services, which means I don't have to pull out my credit card right now. We can also add a coupon, which I'll show you in just a minute. Click on confirm booking. And we have confirmed and completed our booking. We as the customer can add this to our Google Calendar. We can start a new booking or we can finish booking. That takes us back to the main booking area. Now on the back end of Bookinetic, some things have happened. If we go to appointments, we see we have a pending appointment. We know it's pending because of this yellow clock sign. We have to approve the appointment. Let's click on the details info for the appointment and we can see what it's all about. We can see the custom fields that were filled in. We haven't added those yet. I'll show you to do that in just a minute. Extras ordered. We wanna have the leasing agreement done as well. And since in our example here, I'll be paying in person, we can add a payment manually. We can go to the three dots over here, click on info. Let's say everything's happened, everybody's happy, everybody's paid. We go to payments, then we click on pay, and then we can enter the amount that we were paid. The actual invoice amount was $1,000. The extras were removed, but maybe I came into the meeting and said, you know what, I want to do the extras anyway. Even though I took them off earlier, let's do them. Even though we don't have time right now, I'll just pay for it now, we'll deal with it later. So we can add the extra amount on there, $3,000 for that leasing agreement. We can also apply a discount if we wanted. We can have the paid amount in total here. Let's make this 4,000 as the paid amount. Change the status from pending to paid. Then click on save. And we see we have now $4,000 paid, $0 due. Click on close and close. And if I refresh, this should update to 4,000. There we go, $4,000 now has been paid and we're all good. And on this page, if you have lots of appointments, you can sort them through any column header you see here. Just click on the column header. It'll sort by that header. You can also choose specific services. So if you want appointments only for the incorporating your business service, just click on here and it shows only appointments for that service or for specific customers or for specific staff members or appointments with a specific status. You can also create new appointments right here. So you don't have to book them through the front end or the visitor doesn't have to book them through the front end. You can add them here as the admin. Maybe you're talking to somebody on the phone. You wanna add a new appointment and you can fill out all the information that you want here. And we can also head over to the calendar tab. This is where we can see all of our appointments. Right now we just have this one. We can change the views by month, day, week, day list. Change the filters only by certain locations or certain services. Under the payments tab, we can see what payments have been made, whether they're paid or not paid. This shows it's paid right now. It shows not paid or pending if we didn't pay it already. Click on info, 
We see more information about it here. And the last spot for managing appointments is the Customers tab. This is a list of customers that have done business with you, so you can refer back to here if you need any information from previous appointments. And so that's really the appointment managing area. The appointments, calendar, payments, and customers. We can also change the appearance of our form. Just so we had a refresher, it looks like this right now. If we go into the Appearance tab, there's a bunch of different themes and styles you can choose from. Right now the default style is applied. You can choose any of the styles. You can also create your own style. If you click into the style that you choose, you can customize pretty much any color you want for any item on here using the options on the left hand side. So that's pretty awesome. Email notifications, these are sent out to the customer and to the staff. There's two tabs here, once to customer, once to staff. And these emails can be highly personalized. For example, in the subject line, you could say, thanks for booking an appointment. And then we add the customer name. Scroll down the side here. Let's just choose their first name. Let's copy that. Put that right in there. Thanks for booking an appointment, so-and-so. Click into the body of the email. Your appointment will be on, put the date right there, at, time right there. So we find the information for the appointment. Let's find the time, or sorry, the date first. There's the date, let's replace the word date. And start time, put that there. So now we have this, your appointment will be on appointment date at appointment time. And that data is dynamically entered based on what the person filled out in their form. That is sweet. And there's all kinds of variables over here for the appointment info, for the service info, the customer info, staff info, location info, company info, and Zoom info, including the meeting URL and password, which are key if you're integrating with Zoom. So to send out an email that has the Zoom URL and password, if you chose to have a password, we're going to add another email. I'm gonna make this the appointment approved email. I'm gonna turn that on. For the subject of the email, it's gonna be your appointment has been approved. And for the HTML body, I'm just gonna paste this in. It's gonna say your appointment has been approved. Thanks for booking, full name of the customer. Your appointment is on, just a repeat of the new appointment email. And the Zoom URL and the Zoom password are gonna be added into here. And the reason we don't add those at the new appointment email is because by default, and currently I'm using the default setting, a meeting has to be approved. Meeting's default status is pending. Once it is approved, that's when it's added to Zoom. It's not added to Zoom until it has been approved. So these credentials, the Zoom URL and the Zoom password cannot be pulled into the email until the meeting's been approved. I'm gonna save changes. I'm gonna show you where to change that setting right now. If you go to settings, general settings, right here, it says default appointment status pending. You can change that to approved. Then you could add the Zoom URL and password to the very first email, the new appointment email. If the status is pending and you try to add them here, they're just gonna come back as blank. There's gonna be nothing there. So we have our appointment approved email. So this is turned on, or this is sent when an appointment has been approved. Email. You also send test emails by clicking on the little test email button here to see how the emails look. You also have the ability to create coupons. Click on the coupons tab here. You can create as many coupons as you want. Click on add coupon. Let's call this the legal eagle discount. I haven't seen a lot of legal practices discount ever based on established ones. So I'm gonna make this a really small discount, 1%. That's a great discount. It's really gonna drive the traffic to our legal practice. And this discount can be applied to a certain range of dates by choosing the start date and the end date. You can have a limit. So if you only want two people to be able to use this coupon, just enter the number two in here or whatever number you want, 240. Or just leave that blank and there's no limit. You can choose this coupon to be allowed once per customer, check that box. Or if you don't check it, a customer can use it more than once. They'd have to use it on different appointments they book because you can't put more than one coupon code per appointment booking, but they could book five appointments and use the coupon code on each of those, so use it five times. If you check this box, they can only use the coupon code once. No matter how many appointments they book, they can just use it once. You can have this coupon code applied only to specific services if you want. If you choose a service here, it's applied only to that service or those services, you can choose more than one. If you leave this blank, it's applied to all services. 
Same with the staff. We can have the booking apply to just certain staff members or to everyone if you don't select any staff members. Click on add coupon code and we have our legal eagle discount coupon code right here and this is the actual code that they enter. I may want to change that. Let's click on edit. Let's remove the spaces there. For some reason I like discounts, discount codes without spaces. And we're going to see how this works in just a minute but first we're going to add a custom form which allows us to collect more data from our customers. Let's go to custom forms in the bottom and then click on custom form and staying with our example of a legal service and in a corporation meeting, let's call this the Incorp form. This will be applied to the incorporating your business service. If you don't choose a service here, it'll be applied to all of them. You can also choose multiple services here if you want this form to be on multiple different services. It's up to you where you put that. And then we can ask for more information. For example, we could have a text input field and ask uh, the label, what is the name of your business? because then you can maybe pre-fill some forms before they come into the office. Minimum length of, say zero, maximum length of 100 characters, and it is required. And let's also add a phone number. I'm sure that's probably in the incorporation form. What is your business phone number? Minimum length of zero. Maximum length of, let's see, 3, 6, 10, and 2, 12. That includes dashes though, if they want to add dashes. And then we could have, let's see, uh, radio buttons. How old is your business? Is required to add choices of zero years, one to five years, six to ten years you get the idea so now we have three questions in here let's click on save form now we're going to see what this looks like on the front end let's go back out to our legal eagle booking system here refresh let's choose our location choose our staff choose our service of course we'll add the leasing agreement upsell next step let's enter our name first name last name gibberish phone number is that right? Four, three, and three is too many. I was just right. There we go. And here's the extra form. What's the name of your business? WP Learning Lab. What's your business phone number? Gibberish. How old your business? One to five years. Then click on next step. Not a real phone number. So that's great. Let's add just numbers for the phone number. There we go. And let's pick an appointment date, like the 22nd of April at three. And now we add a coupon code. If we refer back to our coupon codes, this is it right here, Legal Eagle Discount. It's gonna give us a whopping 1% if this works. Paste that in there, click OK. So it says coupon not found, so there's an error in the dates. Let's go back into here, let's click on Edit. When we created the coupon, I didn't change the dates. So it's the 25th to the 25th that the coupon works. And this is for the date of the booking. So today is the 24th of April. And if we wanted to have this apply for the date of the booking, we need to have the booking date range. So let's just change this to the 30th. And we'll pick a date between the 25th and the 30th for our booking. Click on Add Coupon. Come back out here. Let's refresh this. I'll quickly fast forward as I fill out this form again. And now for the dates that we choose, we want to have something between the 24th and 20, or sorry, the 25th and 30th. So let's make it the 29th. It's one spot available, 10 a.m. Put our coupon code in here and click on OK. And there we have our 1% discount applied, $40. Whopping 40. And again, I'm going to choose local, which is cash on delivery. Confirm booking, and we have our booking confirmed. That's how we add custom forms and coupons to our booking system. Now that we have some appointments booked and a couple are pending, let's see how this Zoom integration works. We have this one up here, currently has the orange clock, which means it's pending. If I click on the three dots, I go to edit, and I can change this from pending to approved and check the box, send notifications. 
So this is me having time now to review the appointment, say, okay, I'll do that appointment, or whatever your process happens to be. If you have to switch from a pending to approved first, or whatever your process may be, if your appointments are first pending, they will not be added to Zoom until they're switched to approved. So choose approved, choose send notifications, click on save. Now if I head into Zoom, let's remember these dates here, April, or sorry, May 22nd. So if I go to my Zoom account, I should have that meeting already. Let's go to meetings, and here it is. May 22nd, 2 p.m., incorporating my business. And May 22nd, 2 p.m. And this is where I was saying at the very beginning when we did the Zoom integration, you can add variables to the titles. So if, if I added the variable of customer name, it would say here incorporating my business with customer name. That might make more sense if you wanna do it that way. So that's where the power of those variables comes in. And we should have also received an email to this email address, which is the person who booked the meeting. So if I go into my email account, we find the email right here from one minute ago. Thanks for booking Bjorn Allpass, entered my name, the date and the time, the Zoom URL, and the password to log in. Now if I click on this, it's not gonna work yet because it's way too early, but it's gonna go through all the motions, download the app, and it will, I'm surprised I don't have that downloaded already. I use Zoom quite a bit. So I'm joining a meeting, meeting that's not there yet, and we have to wait for this meeting to actually happen. But once it starts, we have to add the password, and that's how you join the Zoom meeting. And that's the Zoom integration. I'm gonna leave this meeting, should have ended it for all, update later. A lot of dialog boxes. Okay, so that's the email, and there are the credentials that only appear after the meeting is approved. I think I hammered this point home at the very start when we first did the Zoom integration, but just remember, you have to have the meeting approved before it's added to Zoom. So if you like what you see in Booknetic, and I don't know why you wouldn't, head over to this URL. There's a link in the description down below and check out all the features available. We covered a whole lot of them in this video, but there are always updates, constant updates. So make sure you go to this page, check out what the developers have to offer and get Booknetic if you think it'll help your business. And if you wanna check out the previous tutorial we made for this plugin, it is right here. It is a gym booking calendar. And if you haven't done so yet, please make sure you click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. My name is Bjorn Allpass from OEP Learning Lab. Until next time, keep crushing it, and I will see you in the next video.